My, we prairie people sure uh, talk a lot about how this is supposed to be so good for us, don't we? Um, and what does that mean? I mean, if just standing here and looking out at it doesn't do anything for you, let me, uh, let me explain something about carbon sequestration or carbon storage, which is a mechanism that prairies, grasslands, wetlands are some of the most efficient and scalable tools for um, that we can conceive at this absolutely desperate time where we need these kinds of mechanisms for taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and refixating it into our soils where it can be used by all the life on earth. To begin this little lesson I want to introduce you to a very common friend of ours at the prairie. It's Helianthus grisesseratus, the sawtooth sunflower. Now we just had some rain last night so these guys bolted real quick. Um, after this heat wave they'd only been about this tall. I came here two days ago and they were about this tall just above my waist um, and now one night later they're just about at face level, eye level. As you can see towards the end of the year they're gonna start getting this up there, these inflorescences. Helianthus grisesseratus every single year is producing all of this mass all over the prairie. There are, there are there've got to be tens of thousands of individual plants of this species on the prairie. And I'm only using this example because uh, it's so macroscopic. It's so easy to show you. Um, hey there. All these cabbage butterflies are on the milkweed along with one big old monarch right there. And then you can see that 12 spotted darner. Yeah. Isn't that nice? So now let me use our friend here, uh, Helianthus grisesseratus, as at least the most exemplary visualization of how carbon sequestration works so darn efficiently on a prairie or a grassland at getting the carbon dioxide, which is suffocating our atmosphere, allowing certain kinds of opportunistic plants to thrive, which are absolutely consuming ecosystems, and is, uh, you know, degrading the ozone layer and all that stuff that they should be teaching you in school. Because every single year, Helianthus grisesseratus has to produce all of this mass. Sorry, Ant, I didn't mean to jostle you there. Um, all of this mass, all of that flower stalk, and it's got a root system that's going down several feet into this, uh, this dense, nearly impenetrable prairie soil penetrable to anything except prairie roots and John Deere. My point is that they need carbon to make this. They need carbon to make all that. And they do it every single year. Trees, theoretically in certain environments, trees are better at carbon sequestration because they are much more massive. And in all those leaves, they retain that carbon. However, one of the big problems is that all of this mass that's being created in order to further photosynthesize, flower, and reproduce, most of the energy that it's creating is not going into this stalk. Or this stalk, even. No, most of it's going into that root system. Because the prairie plant's root system is its lifeline. So these guys, every single year, they have to make all of this out of all of that every single year and then when they die back it returns to the ground for example when a forest burns all of that carbon is above the ground it gets returned straight as carbon dioxide and monoxide to the atmosphere this stuff when it burns it's pretty low to the ground most of it just goes Fresh right back carbon, into the soil already in solid form and prairies of course are supposed to burn um, which is a whole nother topic a whole nother video but when you have the diversity on a prairie that we're trying to achieve with this one, when you have the full-fledged ecology as close to the semblance of pre-settlement levels as it can be. Now, we don't fully understand ecology. 
I've heard the comparison recently that a Rubik's Cube is child's play to ecology. Ecology, the, you can't Im imagine all of the factors and we do not understand. Hey, look, this guy's got some flowers getting off there. Check it out. Yeah, those will be, those will be feet above my head soon. Um, where was I? Oh yeah, so all of this diversity can increase the carbon sequestration output of this by 200% after 13 years. It takes time. I mean, these prairies needed an ice age in about 15,000 years just to make the soil that it could all grow in. So when you get rid of this prairie, you don't really get it back. But it takes some time even just to make an emulated prairie, something that serves a similar function. So when you have the diversity that we're trying to achieve on this prairie, and that luckily we do kind of have because it's a remnant prairie left over from pre-settlement, you can increase the carbon sequestration outputs by 200%. A lot of that has to do with different kinds of photosynthesis. There's different kinds of photosynthesis that different plants use. Um, and legumes, the, the, bee, the pea family, Fabaceae, is, uh, is notoriously efficient with uh, not only carbon sequestration and carbon fixation, which is taking that gaseous carbon. Look at those clouds, my. Oh, prairie skies. And turning it into solid forms of carbon. And they do the same thing with nitrogen, which is another essential compound to these all plants. Imagine just one restored tract of prairie, taking one farm that's lost its fertility, planting it with all of this, not only can help restore its fertility over a long period of time, but will become one of our strongest and most efficient and cheapest tools for battling the damage we've done to the planet or the consequences of that damage. For curbing climate change, we need grasslands and wetlands, and we need diverse grasslands and wetlands. That's not so much to ask, and it's not very expensive. And we can fit these little things in every open space, every tract of green that isn't getting used, every tract of bluegrass, every railroad, every uh, shoulder on every highway. It can all be turned into something like this. And given a little bit of time and a whole lot of Fabaceae, we have an answer.